Hey guys, welcome to Through the Bible, Verse by Verse, a plain and simple study of the entire Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. We're currently in Joshua chapter 6, the conquering of the promised land. Um, as we are now, actually, we're in a different, you could say, section, uh, certainly generationally speaking, different section of the Bible. The first five books were the first five, I mean, the first five books of Moses, the law. And now we're in a kind of, we're in a different era because we, as we are, will study, the, the nation of Israel has crossed over into the promised land. And one other thing about this, and I, 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 I'm kind of, I want to kind of highlight this too, because, and we'll see this moving on. Um, I, and I, I should have paid attention to it more. I should have highlighted it more. <clears throat> but one thing, when when the children of Israel crossed the Jordan, now in our last study, in fact, a couple of studies, the, the children of Israel, now we, we see the beginning of the book of Joshua. Moses has died. So now Mo, Joshua is in full control. God is elevating Joshua in the eyes of the people and um, and so then they cross the Jordan now something interesting happened when they cross the Jordan um, the manna stopped and now they begin to live off of the land uh, and they begin to and it's just the blessing which is the you can say the 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 being the fulfillment of being in the will of God. In other words, the the blessing, the prosperity, will come as a result of now them being in the will of God. Now that's important because this blessing does not apply for them in Rome or South America. So the 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 during the forty year wilderness travel God supernaturally provided for them um, as Moses said their clothes didn't wear out the shoes didn't wear out um, they didn't grow tired now they you know they didn't have the you know as with all human nature they tired quickly of the supernatural pr pr provisions the manna the the quails water being supplied out of rocks um but it was a supernatural provision and when they crossed over into the jordan um that that and and, and when i say that the, the supernatural aspect ceased however the blessing of being in the promised land began that, that, that the, the land would, by God's blessing, would produce harvest. Uh, the, the rain would, uh, you know, uh, the clouds would provide rain. Okay, in other words, the, the, the land would be blessed. The people would be blessed. The nation would be blessed. So, <clears throat> and they begin to eat when, 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 when Joshua crossed, led the people and they crossed the Jordan. So that this phase now of them being in the promised land, and now they're reaping the benefit. Now, the first thing is, of course, taking the land. So we're going to see now, you know, this whole section of the book of Joshua, them conquering the land, okay, um, as God will bless them. And then, and again, some interesting stories. So, you know, um, now also remember, um, as they getting ready to conquer Jericho, so Jericho would be their first conquering. Um, let's not forget Rahab, but what will become of Rahab, um, because she hid this. this, this she hid uh, um, the spies, and the promise made is that they would be saved. All right, so Joshua chapter six. All right, here we go. 
Joshua chapter 6. Now, Jericho was strongly fortified because of the Israelites. No one leaving or entering. The Lord said to Joshua, look, I've handed Jericho, its king, and its fighting men over to you. <coughs> Excuse me. March around the city with all the men of war circling the city one time. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry seven uh, ram's horn trumpets in front of the ark. But on the seventh day, march around the city seven times. And while the priests blow, uh, while the priests priests blow the trumpets, and when um, and when there is a prolonged blast of the horn, and you hear the, its sound, have all the people give a mighty shout. Then the city wall will collapse, and the people will advance each man straight ahead. Kind of interesting. You may ask why, why, why do this? Well, because God wanted to. That's the simple answer. Um, what is also interesting to note, if you remember 40 years prior that the people said that the nations around them all thought of Israel as weak. In the reality, they were terrified of Israel, that they themselves saw that how God blessed Israel, how God was with Israel. Uh, everybody saw it except Israel. And, and so now they're seeing this, that, man, you know, if, I, if, if, if I'm this generation, I'm thinking, man, we wasted 40 years over really a lie. In other words, the people thought, you know, that the people were stronger. They thought the people thought they were stronger. In reality, um, the people were terrified. Now, another thing about this, and this is, again, something worthy of note, that though the people acknowledged and saw the God of heaven and that the God of heaven was with Israel, their sinful nature still ruled, that they did not humble themselves before God. That 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 and, and despite all of that, they still held in their sinfulness. And that's the sad thing. Um, now you might say, and I'm gonna, I don't want to get too far, but you might say, um, if they had humbled themselves, what would have happened? I, 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 I'll, I'm going to give you a preview. Uh, God, well, a couple of things. God would have said, okay, still move out because I'm giving the, I'm, I'm giving this land to, to the Israelites. Or God would have waited until their sin is full, and we're going to see that coming up. All right, verse six. So Joshua, son of Don, summoned the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and have seven priests carry seven trumpets in front of the Ark of the Lord. He said to the people, Move forward, march around the city and have the armed troops go ahead of the Ark. Now, it is kind of interesting that the, the walls, remember, they, they, the, the, the city of Jericho had closed their gates and, and, and as from a military perspective, Usually the fortified walls was enough to keep the armies out, okay? Um, later, we're going to see one of the strategies of Nebuchadnezzar is that he would just wait for a year, two years, starve them out, okay? Um, but it won't take that long, seven days, remember? <laughs> Verse 8. Um, after Joshua spoken to the people, seven priests carrying seven trumpets before the Lord moved forward and blew the trumpets. The ark of the Lord's covenant followed them. While the trumpets were blowing, the armed troops went in front of the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard went behind the ark. But Joshua commanded the people, Do not shout or let your voice be heard. Do not let one word come out of your mouth until the time I say, Shout. Then you want to shout. So the ark of the Lord was carried around the city, circling it once. Then they returned to the camp and spent the night there. So one time they would come out. Kind of interesting because the people of the city would see this. The people, they already was terrified when Israel crossed the Jordan. And now they saw that the people circled around one time. So they did that for six days. Verse 12. 
Joshua got up early the next morning, and the priest took the ark of the Lord, and the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets marched in front of the ark of the Lord, while the trumpets were blowing, and the armed troops went in front of them, and the rear guard went behind the ark of the Lord. On the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. Early on the seventh day, they started they started at dawn, and they marched around the city seven times in the same way. That was the only day they marched around the city seven times. After the seventh time, the police, the priests blew the trumpets, and Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. But the city and everything in it, uh, but the city and everything in it are set apart to the Lord for destruction. Now, keep that in mind. We'll come back to this in the next chapter, but I want you to keep this in mind. Everything is set for destruction. Then he says, only Rahab the prostitute and everyone with her in the house will live because she hid the men when she went. So they're going to keep this promise. And it's kind of interesting because she is the only one of faith. Which, again, I, this, this is just so worth noting. Um, that, jo, uh, that Rahab, who was, again, not a covenant person, not a Jew, um, who saw the same thing that everyone else saw, but her outcome was different because she believed. And she clinged to the God of heaven. Everybody else could have done that and have, would have been spared. At the very least, they would have, God would have had mercy on them. So that, that, that is in itself is the testimony of God's mercy and grace. But, I mean, here Rahab decided not to go along with everyone. And she was spared. Verse 18. But keep yourselves. Now this is important. Verse 18. But keep yourselves from the things set apart. Or you will be set apart for destruction. If you take any of those things, you you will set apart. Okay, if you take if you take any of those things, you will set apart the camp of Israel for destruction and bring disaster on it. Now we'll see this later. This is almost prophetic, which Moses is saying. For all the silver and gold, articles of bronze and iron are dedicated to the Lord and must go into the Lord's treasury. So the people shouted. And the trumpet sounded, and when they heard the blast of the trumpet, the people gave a great shout, and the walls collapsed. And the people advanced into the city, each man straight ahead, and they captured the city. They completely destroyed everything in the city with the sword, every man and woman, both young and old, and every ox, sheep, and donkey. This is exactly what God had told them to do. Uh, verse 22. Um, Joshua said to the two men who had scouted the land, Go to the prostitute's house and bring the woman out and out of there and all who were with her, just as you promised her. So the young men who had scouted went in and brought out Rahab and her father, mother, brothers, and all who belonged to her, and brought out her whole family and settled them outside of the camp of Israel. Now, we'll see this later. Now, they, at this point... Um, Notice he said he set up them outside of the camp, but they live. Now later, they will be a part of Israel. Verse 24. Um, I, I, let me just say this. Imagine the prostitute who saved the, the family. Um, the prostitute probably was the disgrace of the family. Verse 24. They burned up the city and everything in it, but they put the silver and the gold and article, the bronze and iron into the treasury of the house of the Lord's house. However, Joshua spared Rahab the prostitute, her father's household, and all who belonged to her because she hid the men. Uh, Joshua sent a spy on Jericho, and she lived in Israel to this day. Now, right here, we, I, 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 I this is why I love, you know, studying verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book. I, I said earlier that there is much discussion as to when sometimes who wrote these books like for example we don't know the 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 the, the book the title Joshua is it, it was given by scholars 
and then there's debate as to the time. But see, statements like this also clarify. And we, we know that the book was written during the lifetime of Joshua. Because notice, Rahab lives, right, during this time. So she said she lives, um, verse 20, 25 again, Joshua heard Rahab, the prostitute, her father, household, and all who, who belonged to her, because she hid the men Joshua sent out to spy on Jericho. And then she said that she lives in Israel to this day. Now there's going to be more to her because not only does she live in Israel, she begins to marry and then she becomes in the direct bloodline of Jesus. Now that's amazing. Um, uh, verse 26, at that time Joshua imposed this curse. The man who undertakes the rebuilding of the city Jericho <coughs> really, is cursed before the Lord and he will lay its foundations at the cost of his firstborn. He will set up the gates and cost uh, at the cost of his youngest. And the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame spread throughout the land. Now, again, this is an amazing story on many fronts, um, because this is their first conquest. Um, this is their first conquest. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it also shows, as I, as I said before, this generation will be one of the purest generations. In the, in the way they're going to do everything right, most of, for the most part, okay? Um, so this is their first conquest now, and, they, as, and they're going to move forward or, you know, um, 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 eastward, westward, northward, like that. They're going to move um, and then conquest the other lands. <clears throat> this will be Joshua's sort of prime directive. He's already brought the people into the land. And so now we're going to see, like I said, the next several chapters, we will see them con the conquest of the land. <clears throat> and then we will see them dividing the land as God has said, the promised land. Okay. Um, in fact, let me just give you a quick um, this is sort of a map here. Um, you can see uh, of some of where they what they're going to conquer, conquer here, and how the land will be divided. The, the map on the left, you know, if you can kind of zero in on that, you see the, the various tribes, some of the cities and tribes there, but the regions. Um, just kind of get, get just, just an idea, and this is. Pretty much by the time Joshua is finished, this is this will be his legacy, his story. Um, all right, guys, pick it up in chapter seven in the next study. I will see you then.